Resist the urge to bring your man to a girl's night out, okay? Like ever, never, or everyone's going to be sad. Or just pissed. So I want to go into a whole thing about this and extend on reasons why. With the help of one of my mutuals, uh, Danielle, she gives the best advice for friendships, especially female friendships. And also, uh, my husband got me a whole box of instruments, so here we go. I don't know how to play them yet, but I'm like, gotta come, why you gotta come? I'm friends with you. I'm friends with you. He your little friend. You and your little friend go hang out at the playground, wherever y'all do, y'all do, I don't need to know. I don't gotta be part of it. Why, why do, why do y'all be trying to involve you in the friendship? I get it. You want all your besties run again. I don't like them, though. There's research that shows that women do behave differently in co-ed spaces than they do if it's a female-dominated space. We are more likely to maintain an appearance of cooperation when there are males in the room. But when there's a lot of women in the room, we might relax and be, I don't want to say be more ourselves, but we might relax a little bit. Is that women's relationships are so close because we engage in self-disclosure. Meaning I share, you share, we're opening up, right? And we do that because it's like we're in a vault together. That's why we have such platonic intimacy. He's not in the vault. I'm sharing with you, not with him. And so you're going to have your friends working, like doing mental labor to measure their words because he's not in the vault. So they're sharing things uh, with, a, with the goal of developing connection with you and trusting you as her girl who you have history with. Not him, despite how wonderful he might be. Okay, Danielle makes so many good points. Uh, she, she makes several other points. So you just have to watch the whole video. It's linked in my caption. Both those videos are. Before I get into it, please subscribe, hit the notification buttons, comment, share, all that thing, all that stuff really, really helps me grow this page so I can continue to do this work. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So one of the first, so let's hit the first point and then I'm gonna go over the other points. In the and this may seem like common sense, but you wouldn't believe how many women try to bring their husband or boyfriend along to stuff. And even, uh, I have a friend who went out with her girlfriends, you know, uh, who now have boyfriends, and they constantly bring a friend for her, which I find to be just almost, an, it's insulting. And what that comes down to is like, hey, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to make time for a girl's night out. So instead, all we're, we're, you know, we're all in couples now. So let's meet up and I'm going to bring this other girl who's also single along that you don't know so that I don't feel bad when um, you have no one to talk to because I want to talk to my man. <laughs> I, I, I was so like pissed for her when I heard this because she didn't like the girl. Right? And this has happened multiple times where uh, a, a woman's like, oh, what about the single woman? You know what? If you're going to meet up with like a bunch of couples and then invite one of your single friends and you need like some, you need to bring a plus one for them so that you can justify ignoring them, d don't even bother. Like A, either don't invite them at all because now like they're weird as you all couple off, but B, like it's like setting them up on a blind friend date that they didn't ask for. They they wanted to meet up with you, not you and your boyfriend and some random chick. That uh, you know what I mean? Like it's so bizarre. But also, if you feel the need to do that, then that means that you already know that you're going to ignore that person. That your time is going to be divided. Your your attention is going to be divided. Why even put her in that situation? Me have there's a reason why girls like there's girls nights. And to me, those are sacred. The only time I would ever bring my husband to a girl's night is if they wanted him to come. They, cause like, I mean, <laughs> having Anthony there is almost like having a girl there. And I'm not, I, I say that as a compliment. Um, he's actually the more like emotionally mature one of the two of us, you know, like I've, all my girlfriends feel safe with him. And yet at the same time, despite how they feel with, about him, how much they love talking to him and hanging out with him, I would still never, ever, ever bring him unless they requested him to come. Even if he, when he, on the rare occasion he comes because they want to see him too. And you know, maybe they're busy and they don't have time uh, to do two separate days. I mean, people are busy and Danielle talks about that too is that a lot of people try to try to mix, you know, time with their boyfriend or husband with their friends, but it, don't do that. I know we all have limited time, but this time with just your female friends or, you know, non-binary or whatever, whatever this is, when you have a cishet man there, it almost always changes everything. Almost always, and especially if he's like dating or married to one of you, because that woman 
usually changes who she is around him. Not always. I don't. I'm exactly the same person around my husband as I am in front of my friends, which was one of the things that when the major green flags that I noticed and they noticed, they're like, wow, you are just as like weird and crazy and silly and chaotic and hyper and all that stuff. You're literally the same around him. You're not policing yourself. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I feel totally safe. And also like I've done a lot of work on myself to realize that I, I, I can't keep that up. I don't want to date someone that I have to like, you know what I mean? Like it's exhausting. If you are having a, a night out and all of your friends just happen to be coupled except for one and you, and you bring someone because you know that you're going to ignore them, what's the point? Make a special date without your boyfriend, you know? Like it, it, it truly is, it is so insulting. And I say this as someone who was single for most of my life until I was like, until I got married, I was single most of my life. So I am the single person. I am the, I have been the odd men out from my twenties, my thirties, early forties. You know what I mean? I am not used to being like one of the couples in this, any scenario hanging out. Like this is still new to me. I'm like, what? Oh my God, I'm married. Wow. So I will always have a special place in my heart for single women and how people are so weird with us, right? Like, oop, you know, like what some women are jealous of, they don't want a single woman there because they don't want their husband flirting with it. I don't even know. We're like such a threat to so many people. And I know why, but it's annoying. You cannot make time for your girls without your man and without them bringing their man, assuming they date men. Then don't like, you, you like you're doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. You are setting yourself up uh, to be alone because it, it, it the less if you cut off all these women your friendships and to go hang out with him all the time and only see them and when you see them you bring him these are these women do not owe you anything when that man screws you over which he most likely will because you're already centering him and if you start off a relationship centering a man you think it's going to get better with time it's only going to get worse especially once he throws a baby into the mix that now you have to take care of you know what i mean like please the, the, the start out not screwing over your friends i know it's exciting when you meet someone I know that relationships do take time, right? Like I would be, I would be delusional to think that I can just keep on with my single woman life once I'm in a committed relationship and especially once I'm married. And at the same time, relationships still have to remain a priority. I may not be as available, but I'm available because they're my lifeline. And I've talked about this a lot. We know that men, like, and like men come and go, relationships come and go, your friendship. That's why I talk so much about not just decentering men, but decentering romantic love. Like that we weren't meant to do this where we just are in a house with one person and maybe some kids and then everybody else is just whatever we see when you can. That's not what we were meant to do. That is not like community minded. That is literally a product of capitalism and patriarchy and all the things, all the things that are trying to isolate us into this individual mindset instead of community mindset. And so when you're a woman and you marry a man and you're stuck in a house with a man and you've cut off all your friends, when you need to get out, you have no one to turn to. Right? That's assuming he's not abusive. If he's abusive, you definitely are cut off from everybody. But do not cut everyone off of your own free will. Because, and then expect those women to show up and want to go hang out and do girls night out once he dumps you. Like, sorry, they don't owe you that because you just disappear. When you bring a man there, now I... So one of the other points she talks about is that especially if a woman is, you know, has, is very early on her decentering men or not, not even on that journey at all. And you bring this dude. Now I am a proud slut. Up until recently, I'm the person who's like, oh my God, yeah, I like fuck this dude. And he like, well, I'm the one who has all these crazy, you know, schmeg stories, hookup stories. Uh, and you know, because I'm a professional storyteller and comedian and all this crap, I always end up entertaining people a lot. And you know how it is. If, 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 like, especially if you, you, you do these crazy things that a lot of other women don't, they're like, what? What do you mean going to a Schmegs club? What? You know, they want to know about it, especially if they've never done it before. So I talk freely about my life. If he doesn't like how Schmegsly liberated I am, Danielle talked about this, then he may be in her ear being like, I don't know. I don't like her. He may influence her relationship with you because men are very good at this cutting you off from friends especially the feminist ones 
your friend's boyfriend doesn't like how feminist you are, doesn't like that you're a slut, you may pull away. She may not even see it happening. She may not even realize that he's doing that, but she, he may, you know, pit her against you. And so if you, so if you don't trust this man, like I, I, like I am so myself, but once you bring your man there, now I'm like, oh man, God. First of all, I don't want to be judged by him. I don't want him to then judge me and talk about me and, and like talk crap about me. Like, oh, your friend who goes to the Schmucks clubs. I don't want him telling other people about me. Like, I don't know this guy. I'm here for you. I don't know this guy. And that's like, that's like bringing your boyfriend to a therapy session sometimes because our conversations are deep. And like Danielle was saying in that video I stitched, if there's a man there, not only am I not going to be as open, but I'm also not going to be as combative. I mean, not combative. That's not the right word. I'm not going to challenge as much, right? And, I, and I've talked about this before, but you know, I've worked with um, a lot of students when I was doing outdoor education. And the ones that were from all, all girls schools, um, I couldn't believe how differently how different they acted because there was no men, no boys in this group. You know, they really challenged each other. They, they were also like more confident in all kinds of things. I know this is a very big subject, so I don't want to go into like the whole thing, but I'm just saying in my, in my experience working with, with kids and teenagers and in my own experience, uh, working in male dominated industries, I promise you, I act very differently when it's all men and just me, when it's all men and, and then half not all men, but half women, half men, like the, the men's presence and how many of them are there absolutely affects the way women behave. And it's not because like it, uh, always a pick me mentality. It is a safety issue. It's a safety issue. I don't know this dude. As somebody who talks about my Schmeg's life on stage a lot, I have had, I had to defriend a dude who I'd been so open about myself. And then one day all it's, I was like, oh, there it is. After I did a show talking about hooking up with this dude in the woods, and then he like ate my hoon in the wood. Anyway, it was a crazy story, right? He threw that in my face all the time. Oh, you're going to go fuck that guy? I was like, oh, no, 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 you're done. I'm not your friend. You know what I mean? Like men will take stuff from our own stories and be and make fun of you, right? They're, they're, especially if they, they don't owe you anything. They're dating her. So men make spaces unsafe. Not just physically, but emotionally, right? Like, oh, I'm not going to talk if you bring him. And then on top of that, if you're making out with him, Get a room. Why are you here? Why are you here? Stay home. Do not bring him. I'd rather, as much as I'd love to see you, I would literally rather not hang out with you at all than have to deal with that dude. Right? So to me, it, it is like, it is so disrespectful to bring your boyfriend or your husband to a group, a, 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 an intentional like girls night experience or girls vacation or girl, whatever, you know? And again, I say girls, but I mean like, Whoever it is, a safe group of people. And then you got this dude you're dating coming in here. Then one of the other things that she talked about, which is also a good point, is one of the reasons why women do this is because they, they, their, their guy friends don't have friends. And so y'all know this is my wheelhouse, right? Well, for those who don't, who are new here, I wrote this article for Harper's Bazaar that went viral. Men have no friends, women, and women bear the burden. And this right here, this is one reason why women bring their men to this, to our nights out out of guilt, out of a sense of obligation, out of the fact that he's too lazy to make the effort to make friends. So, you know, you don't want to leave him a home, home, home alone. Or Daniel also talked about a lot of men are jealous. They're, they're jealous of our friendship. And so uh, they don't want you going out without them because they're, I mean, men are just jealous of us in general. That's literally what ha most of this is about, right? It's projection, it's jealousy. And they're like, God, it's not fair. She is like such an active social life and I don't, even though I'm too lazy to actually make the effort to, do, to change it. So I will guilt her for going and hanging out with a girlfriend or I'll try to go along with her, or make her feel bad when she comes home right? Or another thing, take note, is that a lot of men, if you go on a girl's trip, they will like get a, I know, uh, I know a man who got a DUI while she was gone. When I was on my family vacation with one of my, my best girlfriends, my ex threw, threw out his back, right? They have, they'll have a crisis. They have some crisis while you're out having fun with your girls. Take note. Those men are trying to sabotage you. They're jealous of you and they're trying to sabotage you. So please pay attention to that. That is, it's always intentional, okay? On a rare occasion, he just happened to have this crisis while you're gone. But if that is what that's about, punishing you and he's sending a warning shot. Don't you dare leave me home alone because 
what's going to happen to me next time? This is a, this is a, like, this is a serious red flag, by the way. But let's say that's not the case. You just bring him because he doesn't have friends. What you're doing, and this is, goes into our conditioning as women and the codependency that's tied into all this crap, right? Is women taking care of men and women enabling men. And by us not by bringing them along and letting them join our friend group, we are enabling them to be lazy in their social life. We are, we are enabling them to uh, not make any effort, right? So why would they go out and make friends when they'll just tag along with you? Making friends is hard work. And, and women uh, tend to be better at it, not naturally. Not naturally, okay? Men are like, women, women, no, is it, I don't know how to make friends. I, I literally take so many chances. I put myself out there. I make myself so vulnerable regularly. I joined a freaking drum club. Literally, y'all. I joined the drum club. I got this big old drum, okay? I don't know how to play drums. I feel stupid all the time. You've heard me talk about this. So women are making so much efforts to make friends, to maintain friendship, to constantly have to make new friends because women are disappear into like motherhood because their husbands suck, right? So we work so hard at this. Why shouldn't men have to? Why did, why? No, no, I'm not sharing my, like I share my friends with my husband, right? Because they love him. But I intentionally go out without him regularly because I want him to have his own separate life and I want my own separate life and then I want our lives to merge in other ways too because it is not healthy it is not healthy if he doesn't have his own friend and I've told y'all before he started two men's groups because I basically was like I could never marry you or see you myself long term with you if you don't have more friends I literally boom right out of the gate noticed I was like wow you really aren't working hard enough on this and I literally wrote a freaking viral article about it it's important to me so he got busy he got real busy and it's taken a lot of time effort time patience but effort and men don't want to do they don't want to do effort and literally are so lazy because they don't have to do things why don't they have to do things well patriarchy first of all but second of all because we enable them we make it so that they don't have to do not make their friendship life easy by bringing them along and sharing your friends with them and introducing setting them up with people, that's their job. These men are not children. We really need to stop thinking of them as children. They can stay home alone. If they, if you have friends and they don't, and you go out and they're home watching TV by themselves, let them, let them feel bad about that. I don't know about you, but pain is the one of the biggest impetuses for change for me. It's called growing pains for a reason. It's not fun to make effort, be vulnerable, change, grow. But for some reason, not some reason, patriarchy, <laughs> women are just taught to make, to let it make make men's growth easy for them. Make, make it just as, as as soft landing as possible. No. I'm done, I'm done infantilizing these dudes. They are grown ass adults. I'm not gonna make their friends for them. I'm not gonna just usher in a whole friend group for them. This is their job too. Don't make their life any easier in terms of friendship just because they're dating you and you have an amazing friend group. I'm not saying, again, do you just cut them out and shut them off and don't let them be in your friend group, but uh, it's these are still my friends. Their loyalty is to me right and they deserve alone time with me they deserve time alone where they can share all this stuff without having to worry about some other dude and if they're judging them men tend to make every safe every space unsafe and even if they don't make it unsafe a lot of women have so much trauma from men even if that man isn't unsafe or makes them feel unsafe they are so in their self-protective um, trauma responses and stuff that he could be the safest man in the world and they're still just gonna be a little more reserved just because you brought him. Don't do that to them. Come on, you know better than that. And if a man cannot handle you having friends outside of him, that's a big red flag, babe. That's a big red flag. That man's gonna cut you off from all your friends at, at, at best case scenario. He dumps you, you have no one else. But He'll also exhaust you because you're his only friend. You're his only friend. And that means you're his therapist, his life coach, his career counselor, in addition to all the other stuff, you know, schmegs worker, uh, domestic laborer, birther of his children if you do that. You know what I mean? Do not make life easy for men. Do not make life easy for them. It starts with the little thing, like bringing them to girls' night. Keep them home. <laughs> They'll survive. One last thing, I was on a podcast with Danielle, link that too. But people ask me all the time about how to make female friendship. She is a female friendship coach. She's amazing. Please follow her on all her social. 
content has changed my life.